prefer to listen to who opinions and beer. I prefer mead. You sent me to hell, Jason. I really just want to make everybody jealous. <laughs> I'm a person from Earth. You are the smartest dumb guys I've ever met. <laughs> Doesn't that sound just immediately bring joy? Hello. This is the Opinions and Beer Podcast. I'm your host, co-host. I'm one of your hosts, Adam, and the co-host, Eamon. I'm, I'm the I'm the other one. I'm over here as well. I'm Eamon. Go, go, go. Go, go. Trying to, we're trying to, uh, to interact with the ASMR crowd. The A, the A is the ASMR. Okay, so the first thing about this beer that I just poured, let's go ahead and open about today's beer. That's ASMR. Today's beer is Ridiculous AF by the Saloon Door Brewing Company. What does that stand for? Ridiculous as F. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ridiculous! It is a PB and chocolate Russian Imperial Stout. It is eleven point eight percent in alcohol oh, by wow. volume. Oh, okay, this is a big boy. Um, what's the IBUs on this? Probably nothing. <laughs> Not seeing the IBUs. So the, th- the first thing I'm mad about is the smell, only because it smells decent, but it smells a lot like a beer that I kind of had to toss because of how horrible the aftertaste was, and I really hope, I thought about putting this to the side, because I really hope that this beer does not give me the aftertaste that the other beer gave me. In are, which, you not, are you not dropping names, or are you having trouble remembering? No, Because I, 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 I have problems remembering So it's, it's called Sweet Fang. We, we try a lot of them. It's called okay. Sweet Fang, and the, and the aftertaste of that lingered for 12 hours. It's a 12-hour aftertaste that would not go away no matter what I did. Okay. So, do we know anything about the Saloon Door Brewing Company? I know they're they're um they're a rather newer shelved brewing company. Okay. Uh, they're they're pretty they're pretty newer on the shelf. Um, they're starting to make their way this direction. They're I think they're from Webster, Texas. They're slowly making their way this way. Okay. I know. Um, I know a relative of, of ours uh, suggested that that uh, my sister suggested that this is one of her favorite beers she's had, and she had it on tap. And um, I think. Wow, we're, we're getting we're getting the full sister recommendation on this one. Huh? Yes, this is a recommendation from the sis. You might remember her from the Grand Crew episode yep, where we yep. reviewed St. Arnold's Grand Crew. So I think that right now is probably a good a good idea and good time for us to plug uh, our social media sites yes. like Facebook. It's a really good way to interact with us. Um, we have a, a a, a group on there yes. with, with opinions, opinions and beer, beer. <laughs> uh, really easy to search and find especially if you've already found this podcast so go and look at that and like sister we will listen to your suggestions if you have a beer that you want us to try uh, or something that you've heard of that you haven't heard if we've already reviewed it or not be sure to let us know that way we can check it out heck yeah their bottle doesn't really say much. I know a lot of beers have like uh, stories and <laughs> they have novellas. They have novellas written on the side of their Yeah, a lot of them do. Stuff. They usually have a uh, a good story about how one day peanut butter and chocolate were walking in a factory together. Yeah. It just so happened to be our factory. And, and they touched. Of, <laughs> yes, and they touched. And it also, we tried this and so and so. The founder of our company, Saloon Door Brewing, also had an epiphany that uh, if he had fantastic pig art on his beer and he mixed <laughs> peanut butter and chocolate pig. with uh, Russian Imperial Stout, that that will create a magnificent I mean, piece. That's usually what these say. Yeah. It didn't say that, though. So this, I had to go with what I just did. So Let's be honest. This, this beer looks ridiculous as AF. With the entire uh, 
the flying pig with the <laughs> with the tattoos with the tattoos the, it has it has eye ear uh eye uh teardrop it has teardrop tattoo um and it's it's uh it's canned so that's ridiculous <laughs> trying to get the pig i'm taking taking the photo trying to get the pig in the photo the damn pig wraps around flying pigs and then it has a uh, visit us at saloon doorbrewing.com that's really all it has it has this funny pig oh do, look no on the bottom it does have a manufacture date though so that's pretty cool brewed four sixteen nineteen, cool. which is actually you know the great thing about stouts is that you can age them and they taste better with age are they eight, like at 11 percent around around after 10 percent of alcohol you can start aging your beers uh, under 10 percent after 10 you said yeah that and, and darker beers, not IPAs. Don't you can't age IPAs. IPAs are okay. worse. But over ten percent dark beers, you can age them. So can you give us? Because uh, not everybody has like a scientific insight that you do. Yeah, you you are blessed with having a community around you that is very very knowledgeable about beer, the production of it. Uh, can you give us a little bit more into that of why? And we've we've said it a few more few times. So why do IPAs age differently than say a stout? It's sort of like just the the what the, the what makes it bitter is usually just what makes it bitter. Uh, the hops the hops don't age as well, um, and it it, it kind of gets a the hot bombs like what they call them the yeah. hot bombs that make yeah. it bitter they don't age well and they start turning into like a penny taste oh okay. darker beers yeah, you don't and have I think to worry we've about all the tasted hot taste. that. we've definitely yeah. all tasted that with darker beers you don't have to worry about the penny taste and uh at 11 percent it actually uh, anything higher than 10 percent usually the only thing that's going to happen is actually your beer is going to get smoother with age oh wow and not actually deteriorate the flavor because uh the alcohol the that burn that alcohol taste or the alcohol burn that you might get with a higher alcohol beer that starts to fade away and you start to get more of the uh the flavors and stouts and things like stouts and stuff you know what old l the description that you just gave sounds like a perfect description that is ridiculous a f a f a f now let's go ahead and try this mm, smells good it definitely smells good. I'm a peanut butter fan. I'm a chocolate fan. I'm like a huge like Reese's fan. So like yeah. I'm I'm totally down for that. Mixed with the beer, let's see how it tastes. Oh, a stout, a Russian Imperial stout. Russian like, Imperial. Like this has the potential to be one of my favorite beers right out of the gate, just from what they're describing. Let me see. What do you think? You've had, you've tasted. Okay, it. so my do first. They deliver. It's good, but I'm. But I'm having. Oh, look, you're gonna say it's really good. Look, my my problem, like I said earlier, is that I had a beer called Sweet Fang. It's called Sweet Fang by uh, I can't remember who it's by right now. But they taste very similar. Well, I mean, and Sweet I, Fang was so has put a permanent scarring on me as far as like the taste lingering. As long, if this if this beer does not linger for 12 hours in the back of my mouth. Then this is a ten, well, or nine. <laughs> I, I'm I'm definitely gonna say that um, uh, as soon as tasting it. Uh, well, I'm not gonna say that it's a ten. I think it's or, definitely or a little bit lower. Eight. And the reason why is because, like, yeah, it's eleven point eight percent alcohol. But the problem is, is on the back side of this beer, you um, you taste that it tastes like a beer, uh, a, a really okay, yeah. a really well designed beer. But then it also tastes like there's like boozy. a boozy on the backside, almost like an al- a, a form of like straight alcohol. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like which almost if, like a liquor. Almost. Which we've had beers in the past, and I always mention this. When, whenever I get a boozy beer, it's kind of upsetting. You shouldn't have to age this, but this is a good beer to age. We shouldn't have to age it because we've had high alcohol beers where the alcohol was near non-existent in the in the taste yeah and so because of that i you know i you know uh i guess what are you what are, what notes or whatever what flavors are you picking up whenever you taste it? i guess like a like raw peanut butter raw peanut butter and here's here's what i'm going to tell 
that they nailed. I think that they actually did not like the peanut butter is good, but I don't think that they nailed the peanut butter. More chocolate. This chocolate, if you've had a uh, like the bitter chocolates or whatever, yes, yeah, they nailed the bitter chocolate taste that comes with it. And then, like the fact that it's a, a Russian imperial stout, you almost can't even tell because the uh, the taste of the peanut butter and the chocolate come through so well. It's just that there's such a strong boozy taste at the end that's the only yeah. thing holding this back is that it like at the end there's a little just too much a little too much alcohol yeah i mean don't get me wrong like it's still and i have to explain this when almost every time we do a craft beer like this these craft beers are still you know at least like 10 times better than any most almost all the beers that are going to be down your lo local supermarket aisle, right? Yeah. Like these blow them out of the water. So, but we can't sit there and base every. If we've based it like that, then every beer we tried would be a ten. We've got to be able to separate it, and that's why this one is not going to get as many points. Yeah. No. I, I, it's been dropped. I I was giving an example. Like I was trying to say that whatever I give this beer, if it doesn't if it doesn't stand in my mouth for twelve hours, then it it's higher than whatever I initially give it. <laughs> it's just my. The thing is, I've had a, I've had a really good peanut butter beer that we haven't reviewed. I, uh, my wife made us drink them all uh, when we first got them, and I just haven't traveled. The only you can you can only buy them in Louisiana, so I have to travel all the way to Lake Charles to a specific store to get this beer, and had like a, that drag queen movie on it or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, Rocky Horror Picture Rocky Horror is a Rocky Horror Picture <laughs> sh uh, Show. But beer. I knew exactly what you were talking yeah. about. It's, it's like a Rocky Horror Picture Show beer, yep. and uh, probably it was, it was it's a it was a peanut butter porter though. So the peanut butter because you know stouts usually have a more stouty the the flavors don't come through as much. I, feel I mean like that's and, uh, see, and I think that that's the thing is like a chocolate. That's why chocolates work so well with stouts. Yes. But some of these other flavors that they're trying to mix in do not. Yeah. Like like peanut butter, I don't think is a stout. It's because peanut butter isn't bitter. Yeah. No. You need something that that reacts to those flavors that you're trying to introduce. You need something that complements it. So I get where they were going with this. Yeah. Because this sounds like like you bought the spear because it sounded fucking great. Yeah. Like this is the idea is a great idea. The problem is is execution and it's not it's nothing against saloon door brewing like i'm they made the best beer that they could with these flavors i just don't think that this is set up the right and i think that like you're saying like a porter a nice fucking peanut butter porter yeah sounds exactly like what it needs to be it yeah. needs to be a little bit lighter a little bit uh but maybe a little bit crispy as well yeah like more that's what it needs. more of like a peanut butter coffee notes Yes. Than a peanut butter, just straight up beer, you know. I think, I, and the, I, you, I, I'm, I'm definitely getting the, the chocolate sort of overpowering it in this one. I, w I will say though that um, you know after that first, I feel like the aftertaste, the bitterness or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's because it's such a high alcohol content, <laughs> yeah. and I'm probably like feeling it or whatever. But like, <laughs> like. I, f I do feel like the 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 high alcohol content uh, is tasting a little bit less bad. Like yeah, the more the the, the, the further the into the drink I get, yeah, you know? because but, but it numbs your taste. Yeah, yeah. So you know what? Good, good ploy there, saloon door. Good ploy. Yeah. And I haven't seen um, and like I said, they're pretty new to shelf because like this is like the only one I've seen right now on shelf. I'm sure like some store out there has maybe another beer from them, but nowhere, nothing near us. So this is the this is their breakthrough right now. So uh, really, I guess I'm, I'm assuming it's their breakthrough. It's the only one that I can see on shelves near yeah. us. Yeah. So uh, so who knows what their other beers are like? I can't wait to try more from them. Um, well, good. I'm really glad that we can help get. Um, Saloon Door Brewing's name a little bit further out there. Yes. And the it's way that we stuff. can as well, because, I mean, otherwise, some of these companies, you may not even hear about them. Right. 
Some, some of the best beers, beers that we've had have been companies that we've never heard of before. Like some of the like, and that's just how it works. I've noticed by looking at social media and, and looking at these uh these people from all over the world and the different beers, the craft brewing community. There's so many amazing beers out there that we'll never hear about and we'll never try because of the simple fact that these breweries, these amazing low key breweries, you know, don't have the means to be able to communicate with other people their product besides locally. So, so I'm glad that we can kind of help in the same way that with this company because this is a phenomenal idea and their execution of this is actually it's it's really well done like the problem is is that it's like if you it's like it's like taking a, a fucking vhs and trying to shove it into a dvd player like that's not going to work bro but if you you know cut <laughs> cut the dvd player's hole you know, cut cut a hole out of it and then force the vhs <laughs> in there you know you you still can pretend like you're watching a movie. <laughs> so I'm gonna give that. I'm, I'm gonna give that. My review is gonna be a a, a, a nice nice uh, VHS sized hole in a DVD player. <laughs> a nice VHS. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a um, <laughs> for this ridiculous AF beer. I'm gonna give it part two of the Titanic VHS set. <laughs> 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 Titanic, you know the good part where everyone <laughs> is falling off the ship and shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, be, I believe that the nude scene is there like it's well, missing. So. Like it's 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 obviously missing. It's missing something, but at least it has some of the best parts <laughs> of what it needs to sell. It has some of the best. It has the selling notes, but not the not the complete story. Yeah. <laughs> But but honestly, it is it is pretty high up there. I would say, personally, I'd say it's between about. Uh, I'm gonna. I want to say it's between a six and an eight because that's how I really feel. But like, let's let's pin it down and give it like a, a seven on my end. On my end, that's what, that's what I'm giving. At, but I'm very critical because I'm kind of big on Russian imperial stouts as well. So that's. You know, I'll give it a good 7.5. Weird arbitrary number. <laughs> 7.6 and a half. 7.65 is what Saloon Door's getting. <laughs> um, today, I guess we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, that's a, we, did, we did a good review. Sometimes, sometimes our, review, our reviews are like three minutes, and sometimes we get a beer like this, and our review. We gotta talk more in depth about it. it takes we we do because it's it's so hard to describe some of these things, and it's something that you need to know whenever you're going yeah. into uh, you know try uh, try this product because I mean some of these beers you're you're not gonna be able to get, and if you're gonna go out of your way to get them, you know you need to know if it's worthwhile. Yeah, and uh, you know they put a lot of effort. They put a, a this is. Whenever it's something like that where it's a local brewery, I really try and give more of, you know, what the taste is like. That way that people understand. Because, like, these are, if, you, if you're if you shopping in your local beer aisle, like, these are the types of beers that we want you to expand into. That way that you yes. can try them. Because they are so different. It's... It's night and day the difference between a beer like this and what what the the na nationally pushed you know things are. So speaking of different and new and uh, things that get people talking, um, the boys. I, I I take it that you haven't seen the boys. Oh, are you talking? Okay, so we're going straight into entertainment. Yeah, um, the boys. I no. No, I haven't. You didn't watch The Boys? No, I have not. Like a, seen dude, the boys. Carl well, that's, Urban, dude. That's Carl because, Urban is so good in it. The, see, the the reason why our dynamic is so good is because you know my interests are you know mainly like video games, okay. etc., weird uh, Illumi Illuminati shit, and then you are like videos and entertainment and weird Illuminati shit. Yeah. So then <laughs> we, we 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 connect there. We can discuss the different aspects of both uh, right. both sides. And you, the listeners, get to benefit from that. So, 
Uh, here, we, here we go. What is... All right. What is the boys? What is the boys? Okay, is this is this a type of uh, is, is this a documentary about a boy band? Is no. this an in sync style no. um, a, um, music docudrama? Uh, no, Amazon Prime uh, occasionally gets something right. They occasionally release a um, a show that everyone has to go and subscribe to Amazon Prime to watch. Wait, wait, wait. So the boys, because I have heard about the boys. A- Amazon is, uh, it's an Amazon exclusive? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Amazon Prime exclusive. Really? Good, uh, on, good on you, produced, Amazon. Produced or directed? Produced. Because, because let's be honest, produced, dude, sometimes written? Amazon can put out a Seth Rogen wrote it. Wrote it. He's not in it. Stuff, but. Seth Rogen's not in it, but he wrote it, I guess. Or he wrote yeah. Pieces of it. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so its credibility is Seth Rogen wrote it. Or something. Right, yeah, that, that means nothing to it. me, though. I don't know. <laughs> the, the Boys, starring Carl, Carl Urban. Uh, you might know him from uh, Chronicles of Riddick and uh, he's, uh, Judge he's, Dredd. He's Keith Urban's bro- little brother. <laughs> is he really? No, he's not. Yeah, <laughs> like, just Keith like Urban, Australia. the country singer. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. <laughs> or New Zealand or something. Wow, wow that, that's, that's even cool. more unique. What uh, a cool backstory this guy has. <laughs> but, uh, what about Carl He's Urban? been in good, some good stuff. He's, the main, he, he's one of the lead characters. Uh, the show... Op- uh, it's not a spoiler. The show... Op- uh, it's been out for a while. That's the okay. thing. Okay, now it sounds like a spoiler because you said it's not a spoiler. It's been out for... I, TV's weird, man. TV now. is weird. Uh, you know, uh, most people don't even watch. TV. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue on with the boys, but I do want to touch on something. Another little. I mean, let's be real here. You just said that uh, Amazon, which was an independent site, you know, Amazon's its own thing. You just said that that you were in reference to that on like like it was TV. Yeah. So I mean, the 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 world has changed so much. Yeah. It's amazing. What. The thing with TV fandom is that we're talking about The Boys was big news a month ago. Where in... Where when, back, they, when they were advertising but, look, but, but But think about back in the day when like something like, let's say Lost came on. And okay. it, was, it was big news for the entirety of its run because yeah, it no, came there out was, weekly. There was not a person like... Like, I could not go up to a random person and be like, I'm just not into Lost. <laughs> what? Because, because they they would get so mad. I remember that because I, I was that was my thing is I was like, you know, I, I haven't watched Lost. I, I watched a few episodes and I was like, ah, that was interesting, but uh, it kind of seems like I can spend my time somewhere else, you know? And then like, but people were so upset about that that concept. I only mentioned it to like two or three people because, damn, the insane backlash. Now, if I walk up to somebody, I'm like, fuck Lost. You know, they're going to be like, what's Lost? What is Lost? <laughs> you know? No, I mean, Lost but is pretty but big. The, you know, the, but the, like what you're talking about, the timing... The, the timing of that was so, like, it's so powerful at that point in time. Yeah. The relevance and how, like, our society views that. You know. Well, I, I, in general, I'm just talking about how TV fandom is at a big loss. Because I feel like you can't, there's no waiting anymore. And actually, this touches on the fact that Disney Plus and things like that are starting to, Disney Plus apparently, they're not going to have, a lot of their shows won't be, um, bingeable. You have to wait week. You have to wait weekly for the episodes, like you would. Well, I won't. TV. Well, I won't. You won't. But I'm people, not going to. People get that subscribe Disney to Disney Plus, Plus won't but, get, like they won't be able to watch Mandalorian in one sitting. You got to wait wait a week. Okay. And so some I'm, people are. That's not a. That's not really a bad idea though, because I not. feel like sometimes the binge. Like, don't get me wrong. The bingeability of shows is something that. We desire and we need it, and it is it is super satisfying to just fucking turn on a show and watch it from point A to point B, and then be done with it and be like, damn, I gotta go talk to everyone I know because I've been sitting in my house for thirty six hours watching <laughs> watching one. But that lasts for right? what? That's how long does that last for? 
a day, two days after you watched it. Yeah. That's and that's where I'm kind of get to the point of where like the longevity. You're you're right. The longevity it creates an issue of longevity and and, and yeah fandom. Um, I guess the main word I'm looking for is longevity because it comes to a point where you say, all right, this it's not going to last. Yeah. You know what's next? It's always yeah. what's next. You yeah, know? they're like, okay, well, you doing like, season we're talking, two? We're talking about the boys now when we should be talking about the boys now. Yeah, like we're talking about the boys now, but we should be because if you think about it, like if it was a regular, you're, you're saying they should already have a second boys. No, in this one, no, I'm saying like in you're a, saying that if, the if, gals if it was a regular, series that's <laughs> coming around the I'm corner saying, was, if, should have been right here if it was already. A, if, it was right? a, if it was a regular TV show. The season finale would be happening around now, so it would be okay. relevant to talk about it. Okay. But now we're talking about it, and it's not that relevant because it happened a month ago. Well, and everyone binged it. I mean, I didn't watch. It. No, I know. I didn't I'm, just watch it. Gen- I'm, I'm curious I'm saying about the boys. fandom. Like the, the the fandom, it's hard to market towards fandom now because fandom switches so rapidly. Finally. Finally, I completely understand the point that you were making. Okay. That I totally get what you're talking about. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. People, people, it's like we were talking about before. People are so used to and spoiled to this, this, like, like we as humans get amazing treatment from these industries that, like, they don't, they don't have to to do it in this manner you know like like granted the market is decided by people's personal opinions sometimes people's opinions are i mean if you've ever worked a customer service job (laughs) or if you've ever been like a waiter or anything like that the customer's expectations and standards are fucking super unrealistic a lot of the times so for for these services to be able to you know, like maybe it was too much. Was Netflix too much of a good thing too soon? Maybe. I think even Netflix. I think it was one show. Netflix did a weekly thing, but just binging it. It's just over. It's over. It's over in that week. Yeah. It doesn't even last. Like I, I wanted to bring up Stranger Things season three. But that was July 4th. <laughs> yeah, people don't even <laughs> that probably know what 4th. that is now. Well, we can still talk about it. But I like, like one of the things that I totally lose my train of thought oh, about. Oh, I'm, I'm right sorry. Here. I apologize. You lost your train of thought. Yeah. I'm just trying to make a point, you know, like, like season, Stranger Things, the season finale, had it been a weekly show, would be happening around now. Or, you know, like last week or something. And then we could be like, oh, that's season finale. But no, because it came out July 4th, everyone's talking about it July 4th and yes. 5th. I remember my point now. Okay. And the reason why is I'm going to relate it back to Marvel. Um, whenever Daredevil was released on Netflix, I, I blew that through was. fucking all of it, right? That then was the they, big thing, wasn't it? Yes. And then they released the, the third season much after, and I blew through all of it. And then almost immediately after the third season, you know, it was announced that it was canceled. They may have even announced it after the second. I think that after the second season aired, they announced that it was going to be canceled. They were going to take the stuff off Netflix, and then they released the third season that they had already filmed. Yeah. And, and for, for me as a Daredevil fan, having like gone through and like grew, grew accustomed to this new uh, iteration of Daredevil that was uh, honestly very similar to the comics, um, it, it really hurt for me to, uh, to be separated with that so quickly. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why I have such a bitter taste with the MCU right now is because of stuff like that. Like, like they showed me pretty fast off that they don't really give a shit about the fans 
and how they how the fans have to deal with their business decisions. Yeah. Like they they showed that pretty early on with Daredevil. The thing is, is now it has been what, um, maybe two years yeah. since the release of the third season of Daredevil. Maybe only a year. You know, I could yeah. just be lost in the times or whatever. But people are now saying. Like, I'm seeing on, like, Twitter and stuff now, people being like, holy shit, I just binge-watched Daredevil, and it was the best show I've ever seen. And, you know, people are getting, like, it's feeding into, like, the the whole Spider-Man issue yeah. with the MCU. And it's so weird because it's, like, to me, that's almost an irrelevant thing now. But to these people... That are just now, like, getting into it? Yeah. You know, it's totally different for them. Do you think some people wait for a show to be canceled and then they go and binge it? <laughs> <laughs> they just wait for it. Maybe, maybe some people just love binging it. Yeah. You know, I've actually started binge... Uh, I'm not going to bring that. No, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. No, what, I, we, we started... Would you just start binging? No, uh, we're almost done with House. And we, yeah. <laughs> we started binging House recently. And we're almost done with on the last season finally. I and, bet uh, I bet yeah, like they're they're done with house. I bet the people who uh watched all of House. Yeah, when fuck it was you, Calpin. Yeah, whenever it first <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you <laughs> Whenever whenever House was cancelled on air, those people were so it's so weird because now you know about it and you know, you wish you had a voice or a say so in that. Yeah. But a lot of times it's it's the company's decision. Like the company <laughs> Well, have canceled something before. No, he joined Obama's administration, and so they had to do this whole fucking bit where he kills himself, and he was the best part. And he's like, come on, Harold Kumar, why'd you have to join Obama's administration when you, when you had a goddamn show to do? And then they, do, they, they throw in some random suicide episode for you, jerk off. But, but one of the good things about this is that with... Uh, with the emergence of social media, the internet, people being able to talk about things that we genuinely like, because for for so long, speech was monopolized, and we were not able to communicate with people like in Russia or people in these other countries. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And those people are looking at things like Rocco's Modern Life, and they're like, <laughs> damn, son, that was awesome. <laughs> if only we could get more. So you get like shit like Invader Zelm and Rocco's Modern oh, Life. I didn't so like, like it. Yeah? You liked it? Like what? The Netflix, both of those. I didn't get to watch, I haven't watched the Invader Zim one yet. I watched Invader Zim. The beginning was good, but then it just kind of like, for me, it falls apart. But maybe I'm just like maybe I'm not a, I'm not a big Invader Zim fan. Yeah. So maybe. That's well, what as I'm an Invader Zim fan, let me watch it and then I'll okay. let you I'll let you know next time. Okay. Yeah. Next time. Whether <laughs> whether it was because I like that was a huge part of my. Because at first I liked it. I'm like okay, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. But at, there came a point where I'm like I'm tuning out. Oh. I don't want to do this. Yeah. No. No. I get it. I get it. And here's the thing, though. You, you have to understand that, like, a lot of these shows and things, like, from our childhood, yeah. they had, there were so many heads on that. Like, episodes and stuff, like, like what it is is, like, you know, one, one person will come forward with an idea. They'll have an amazing idea. They've worked their entire lives on it, you know, their entire lives. And it's worth about one to two episodes of full-on content amazing content the creation and the entire character was amazing but they don't have the means to be able to produce the mini series like that and come up continue to come up with ideas like content creation is is tough yeah like it really is so so they'll they'll have like contracted people and writers that come through and then they 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 help fill these voids uh, and they come up with like stories and stuff like that. It'd be like if one of us went to a friend and was like, "Hey, what would be a good idea for a podcast episode that we could talk to <laughs> talk about?" You know what I'm saying? It's not that unusual. But whenever these 
like once those things died or whatever, these content creators like John and Vasquez or whoever did Rocco's Modern Life, I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, sure John and Vasquez is the the uh, the example that I'm using because he did Invader Zim. Um, you know, maybe him working on something on his own again in order to produce something that creates quality content again that might take another 10 years for them to be able to independently do it yeah so so like and then maybe it won't have the same flair as what we saw on like nickelodeon shows because that wasn't necessarily all of that one person yeah. so so it's i think that it's a very the whole topic is very interesting but you know I I, th I think that it's good that we brought this up so that more people are aware of that that process, you know. Yeah. If you could bring something back, what would it be? See, and here's the thing: if it if it were like five years ago, I would have said like Invader Zim or something. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, this is a, uh, well, I mean, it's just a movie you would bring a series okay. though, because these are just movies. A mo movie or series? Because I was about to I was about to just, unload no, no, I'm some saying, games I'm saying on they brought you. they brought these series back just to make these weird movies. Okay. I wish. I honestly wish there was a series. I wish they redid a series of it. Uh, I'm thinking about. I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad about. I wanted to say Terminator the series, but they did that and it was horrible. Right. Uh, you know what? Futurama was really good. But yeah, weird. but dude, you no, know, dude, dude. Hey, here's one of the things that we have to talk about. Uh, apparently, Matt Groening may have been in on the the sex ring. Who? Yeah, Matt, Matt Groening. Matt, Matt, would you believe that a guy with groin in his name <laughs> was potentially no. involved? No. Well, so, Who's Matt Groening? Is he the Bender's voice? No, no, no. That's okay. uh, fuck. I can't think of his name now. No, but he's a totally different person. He's a clean slate. He's a good guy. I refuse to believe that he's ever Who, done anything. Bender? Yeah, Bender. <laughs> I'm not, uh, he also does uh, Jake the Dog, Marcus yeah. Phoenix. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'll never believe he's done anything wrong. Well, besides as Bender. Because Bender's character is pretty fucked up, right? <laughs> right. But, well, supposedly the writer and developer for The Simpsons, Matt Groening, and Futurama... He doesn't do Futurama, does he? Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's so similar in uh, the, the animation. Who did the uh, movies? Him? Because remember... Because remember, uh, Futurama well, had a had It's kind of like what, we're, what we were talking about just a second ago. Like, okay. he's obviously in on it, but... You can't say that he'd, you know, like, a lot of that story and shit like that's all contracted out. Okay. Probably, like, you remember when we were talking to, um, what's his name, Brandon? Uh, Brandon Rhinos? Yes. Yes, he's, he was a storyboard uh, author as well. Like, he goes through and writes scripts for some of these people as well. Because yeah. some people, they just have the talent. They have the talent to be able to sit there and come up with uh, a magical story all fucking day long. And then there's people who have a really interesting view that is like amazing and unique, but they only have a one off, you know? Yeah. So like, so the, so them working together and coming up with something to make a series, like that's amazing. Speaking of Brandon, you've seen that his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> His comic book is doing pretty good. Is it really? Which new, one? Which one? one? Uh, Reindeer with a shotgun. Oh, I haven't I haven't seen that. <laughs> was it? He had a couple. He had a couple of. Uh, but cool Reindeer ones with a shotgun is uh, pretty shotgun. new and it's is, is, is getting pretty good. Yeah, no, uh, it's, it's really it's really cool to look out and see the people that we've like interviewed and stuff and how well they're doing. We've we've gotten a few. Um, We're the bump, man. We've gotten a few people. <laughs> a few people reached out to us to come back on the show. Um, Brandon Rhinus is one of them. Brandon Rhinus, Don Lamore, Don Lenore, and um, and those those two reached out to be back on the show, and then we got a, a reach out from um, Jessica Ross. Some might even say a, a reach around. Jessica Ross contacted us to interview producer for Magic Flix. Oh so well, I have to uh, see what see where that goes. See if we can interview some of these people uh, Thursday, but um. I just want to talk about fandom. The boys, uh, the boys was pretty good. Had some, 
I'll talk. You know what? We we're gonna go into extreme violence. But maybe next episode, because you know we 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 kind we uh, we have such good chemistry. We I just know, talk about stuff. Yeah, we don't need too much of a topic. We can just make content. What around? How much time are we right now? We're at thirty nine minutes. Oh oh shit. Oh okay. Wow. Just from this one beer, huh? Yeah, this beer is good. No, we don't. We only <laughs> cut, touch this. Okay. To give you guys at home an idea of what we have, we have a list of about. 10 topics that we were going to touch on on this episode and we've gotten to a quarter of the first one. Yeah, a quarter so, of the first one. So we'll have so to uh, I so I guess let's talk about the boys a little bit then I'm going to uh we'll, No, we'll, I don't think we should talk about the boys. I think at we should all? yeah, let's just move on. The boys, hey guys, good introductory thing. Good luck on your uh next season but the that, the gals. But that's what my whole ma- extreme violence thing is stemmed from the boys, and then I go into like Final Destination and weird shit like that. So okay. maybe, okay, so real maybe quick, extreme violence. Real quick, rating, different episode. rating for the boys. Rating for the boys. Yeah. What is what is the Adam Morgan opinions of beer rating? Because I don't have a say in it. I guess an eight. There you go. All together. There you go. Because I mean, it's like a it's like a violent superhero film where like superheroes need to be held. It's like if superheroes were real. They should be held accountable for their actions, and these uh, these these guys kind of like form a group where they want to hold them accountable for their actions, and they like they kill they they kill some of the superheroes and stuff like that. And oh wow, okay, and then because so it's like, like retribution. Thing, but then but then there's like then there's like a Superman, and like he, but he's like he's like he's Superman, but it's like very corporate. So the whole super, <laughs> the whole superhero thing has been corporized. Oh so no! Like, so like Superman, he's like good, but then he's like, "Well, I gotta do this for public, you know, like, you know, publicity stunt. This here, there, all." Wow! Fu- and what's this on Disney Plus? <laughs> no, it's should, on Amazon should I go, Prime. Should I go get the Disney Plus and app? It, there comes a point where the dude's like, "Fuck it, everyone can die. I ain't doing this shit." And he fucking yeah. and he just lets people die on a fucking airplane and like there's like Wonder Woman it's like a Superman Superman rip off Wonder Woman rip off yeah, it's like yeah. it's like basically like a like a funny it's I say I want to say funny but it's really dark okay so it's like really a really dark Justice League if like the Justice League had like weird contracts with corporations and they were like trying to make money off their superpowers. So that. it's kind of, it's kind of like a realistic take. What it's almost like a what if Justice League scenario. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Next topic. Next topic. Well, that was that was that's the topic for the episode. All right. Well, uh, so extre- what you, extreme violence. You said. Or uh, should we just bring should, that? Up should we bring that for the next episode? I say let's go about people at home. What do you want? You want another five minutes of violence? I think or do you want another forty-five minutes? Maybe, 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 maybe we should tie in the good and evil with extreme violence. Okay, we can do that in another episode. The one that you're going to listen to immediately after this one because you're binging. This you're is, binging the podcast right. So this now. was this was more about fandom. This was right here the the top part one of four. So actually one and a half we did because the boys we we kind of touched on it so we did one and a half of the four things. We were supposed to talk about in this episode, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. And if you don't think it's fine, well, guess what? That's sh- just your opinion. Just your opinion, and that's fine as well, because this is opinions, opinions and, and beer. beer.